Presenting the transcription feature, Superman! Look! Up in the sky! It's a bird! It's a plane! It's Superman! Yes, it's Superman! Strange visitor from the planet Krypton, who came to Earth with powers and abilities far beyond those of mortal men. Superman, who can leap tall buildings at a single bound, race a speeding bullet to its target, then steal in his bare hands, and who, disguised as Clark Kent, mild-mannered reporter for a great metropolitan newspaper, fights a never-ending battle for truth and justice. And now to our story. It begins far from the familiar haunts of civilization, far from the streetcars and telephones and electric lights of this modern age. It begins in the deep, snowbound forest of the frozen north, where strong men battle the unyielding elements, so that we may have wood for our ships and our houses, wood for our tables and our toys. The ring of axe blades is sharp and clear, and the lusty cry of timber heralds the crashing to earth of another forest giant. Day in and day out, fair weather and foul, men pour out of logging camps to pit their strength against the mammoth trees that tower above them, afraid of nothing that lives and breathes, afraid of nothing but the mysterious legend of the North Woods, the legend of the White Plague. Nightfall has come to the Bartlett logging camp on the Big Beaver. The cold, whipping tail of a northeast blizzard lashes at the cluster of cabins. But inside the camp office, the two men who are seated at the broad fireplace find warmth and comfort in the crackling flames. The older of the two raises his iron-gray head. Speak up, Kirsten. What's on your mind? Must be something mighty important to get you out in this kind of weather. It is very important what I've come to say. Well, then, speak up. Sir Harmon, I've come to say that I quit the job. I go back to Quebec. You want to quit? Why? I've got to quit. Because of the white plague. Don't be a superstitious fool, Gaston. I gave you credit for more sense. There's no such thing as the white plague. We, oui, we. Oui. She come to Big Beaver. She killed Jacques Dupre and the Swede. She killed me next. Now take it easy, Gaston. Dupre stepped into a bear trap. Froze to death before we could find him. Svensson killed himself with his own axe in a drunken stupor. No, no, no. The white plague. Listen to me, Gaston. You're one of my best men. I was going to give you a raise in pay next month and let you handle a felling crew. But I can't do it if you go haywire any time something happens in the camp. This is tough work, Gaston, and it takes tough men to handle it. Uh, nowhere in all Northwood is any man tougher than Gaston Lebois. But nothing can stop white plague. I will be nagged. What you need is a good night's sleep, Gaston. We'll talk it over in the morning, eh? Go on back to your cabin and don't worry. I'll fix everything. But, Mr. Armand, I tell you, I've got to quit. Okay, we'll take care of that. On the way to your cabin, Gaston, stop off and tell Mr. Dawson I'd like to see him. Good night. Bonsoir. Nancy? Yes, sir? You'd better turn in. I've got something to talk over with Bill Dawson. Has anything gone wrong, Dad? I couldn't help overhearing what Gaston said. It's nothing but logging camp superstition, Nancy. Just because we lost two men in the last week, these ignorant fools think the camp is cursed. We'll scotch it. We'll scotch it fast. I hope nothing else happens. Nothing serious, I mean. You never can tell in this business. But don't you fret about it. Uh, poor kid, you have no right to be stuck up here in the woods a million miles from nowhere. Oh, I don't mind, Dad. I know you don't, but it still isn't right. Well, another month or so, and I'll have enough to set you up in Seattle for at least a year. Oh, but I wouldn't want to leave you here alone, Dad. <laughs> don't worry about me. Hey, shut that doorbell before we freeze to death. Good evening, Mr. Dawson. you excuse me, I've got some sewing to do. Go right ahead, Nancy. Sorry I had to drag you out, Bill. Something important come up. Pull a chair up to the fire. Thanks. Sure is me now. Not gonna let up either. This fire helps. Gaston was in to see me. I figured as much. He's quitting. Do you know about it? Yeah, Kurt Travers told me. A white plague's got the knuck. Gets them all when the snow comes. Never seen it to fail. Well, we've got to talk him out of it. We've got to convince him this white plague is just so much nonsense. Is it? What do you mean? We rigged up pretty good stories about Dupre and Swenson. How one got caught in a bear trap, how the other did himself in with his axe, but... Nancy don't know what really happened. Neither do I, Mr. Harmon. Now look, Bill. Don't you go back on me. You don't have to worry about me. Well, then, 
Why all this strange talk? Because strange things have been happening. I told you where I found Dupre. In the crotch of a tree. A tree no man could climb without spikes. And he wasn't wearing them. Hey, yes, I know. I've been logging a long time, Mr. Harmon. I bossed the toughest crew ever to swing axes up in Manitoba. Wherever I've logged, the minute the snow lays deep, there's talk of the white plague. But you know it's just talk. Sometimes I wonder. When you find a man frozen in the river ice like we found the Swede, I wonder. He was drunk. He fell into the water. I wonder. What was that? Timber wolf. They're getting thick and hungry. Deep snow drives them closer to camps. We'll have to set traps. Now look, Dawson. You've got to stick by me. We've got a footage schedule. We must meet 50,000 feet of hardwood before December 1st. We can't afford to lose a man now. I know, but if one more peculiar thing happens, they'll beat it out of here like rats from a sinking ship. You can count on that. Well, then it's our job to see that nothing happens. I wish it was as easy as all that. Loggers are a funny lot. They risk their necks every day in the week. But try and get one to walk under a ladder. Or let a black cat cross in front of them, nothing doing. Listen. Now, that wasn't no timber wolf. Listen. Come on, that's a human voice. Be right back, Nancy. It came from up near those cabins. The wind carried it. Are you sure it wasn't a wolf? Positive. Wolves howl. That was a scream. I heard it twice. Look, the men are coming out of their cabins. Who's that up ahead? Kirk Travers. He bumps with Gaston. Travers, hold up. Come on, Mr. Harmon. What happened, Travers? Who screamed? Must have been Gaston. Gaston? Yeah, he come into the cabin, took a drink, and then stepped out again. Next thing I heard the scream. Where is he? I don't know. He was right outside the cabin when he let loose with them screams, and now he's gone. Dawson, we've got to find him. We've got to. Gosh, Mr. Kent, I can't wait to get there. I haven't been able to sleep a wink since we got on the train. How do you ever expect to wield a seven-pound axe if you don't sleep, Jimmy? Oh, they won't let me handle an axe. Is it a real honest-to-goodness logging camp, Mr. Kent? Uh-huh. As real as they make them. Full of logs and lumberjacks. What's the name of it? I don't think it has a name, but it's on the Big Beaver River. Walter Bartlett, a friend of Mr. White's, owns it together with a few others further north. Do they know we're coming, Mr. Kent? Oh, of course they do. Mr. Bartlett wired the camp. Jimmy, haven't I answered those questions before? Oh, sure, but I'd just like to hear about it. Why, you little... Ow! <laughs> Cut it out. Oh, there's a telegram for you, Mr. Kent. Right here, conductor. Mr. Kent? That's right. Now, we picked this up at the last stop. Oh, thank you. Gosh, I wonder what it is. Well, we'll find out in a moment. Huh. That's a fine kettle of fish. What is it, Mr. Kent? Who's it from? From Mr. White. Listen to this. Suggest you return. Just heard from camp. Trouble there. Trouble? Yeah. What can he mean? I don't know, but this is a nice time to tell us about it. We get off at the next station. Do we have to go back, Mr. Kent? Yeah, I'm afraid so, Jim. Orders are orders. Oh, hang it all. I knew something would happen. Ah, take it easy, Jim. We may get a chance to visit the camp, at least for a day. There's no train back until late tomorrow. Oh, we change for San Marie, Calhoun, Great River. That's our station, Jimmy. Grab your bag. Oh, okay. Hey, you forgot that brand new red and black lumber jacket. Oh, I won't need it now. <laughs> you never can tell. Here, cat. Come on. Oh, it sure is cold out here on the platform. <laughs> You're up north, Jimmy. Hey, is that all there is to... What's the name of the place? Montville. It means Mountain City. Is that all there is to it? Those couple of shacks? Yep, that's all. I told you there were no movies or ice cream parlors. Ooh. All right, train stopped. Off you go. And don't slip. What? There we are. What's he yelling for? Nobody got on. <laughs> What's the habit, I guess. All right, come on, Jimmy. Let's see whether we can hire a sled or a dog team and ride out to the camp and say hello. Well, I suppose that's better than nothing. Gosh, wouldn't you know if something would happen? Hello, He just keeps saying that one word and cracking his whip at the dogs, Mr. Kent. What's it mean? It means forward or go on. He's telling the dogs to move faster. Is he French? French-Canadian, sort of half and half. Boy, I'm sure glad I wore my lumber jacket. That wind is plenty cold. Yes, seems to be picking up. The man who got this dog sled and driver for us said there might be a blizzard. How far have we got to go? Another five miles. Oh, this is swell fun, Mr. Kennedy. Ever! Ever! 
And there he goes again. I guess that's all he knows how to say. He hasn't spoken a word to us since we left. Uh, Canucks aren't very talkative. What's he stopping for? I don't know. He's getting something out of his pack. A rifle. Gosh. Uh Uh-oh. I see why he stopped. Look over there. Where? Oh, I see. Gray dogs. No, Jimmy. Timber wolves. Listen to them. Aren't they dangerous, Mr. Kent? Oh, he'll scare them off with a few shots. He's aiming now. Why doesn't he shoot? Sacrible. His rifle's jammed. It won't fire. Look, Mr. Kent. The wolves, they're coming closer. Now, don't worry, Jimmy. There must be 50 of them. They're spreading out, circling around. Yes, I'll see, monsieur. Vies, vies. He wants us to get out of the sled, Jimmy. Hurry. She's hiding the dogs behind the sled. What do we do, Mr. Kent? Get down, Jimmy. Down low. What will Jimmy and Kent and their Canuck sled driver do in the face of this sudden danger? The wolves are mad with hunger, ready to close in. Can Superman fight them all off at once? Listen again for another thrilling episode in this exciting story of the frozen north. Don't forget, tune in again for the next thrilling episode with Superman. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Action Comics magazine.